Hello, Internet. I am here again with another pet game update, uh, tutorial video, whatever you want to call these things. And today I'm going to add a battle system to the game. So in the previous video, I think it will be the very previous video. It depends on exactly how I release these. Uh, but in a previous video, I added a level up system where you could, uh, every time your pet leveled up, it got some skill points, and then you could put the skill points into like strength, dexterity, whatever. And I alluded to a battle system in that video because it's a very natural fit, right? Why are you putting all points into such stats? And maybe there are other reasons. Maybe you have stats related to like going out uh, fishing or, or, or crafting or, or whatever. Um, I've done stuff like that in some of my games. Maybe there are battle-free reasons to put skill points into your pets. But I think a lot of people would think of like leveling up and battling. They kind of go hand in hand in a lot of cases. So uh, as I mentioned in that previous video, I make all of these videos totally independent. So, uh, you know, with, with the idea that you could mix and match the mechanics you want. So I've done a breeding video and I, you know, but maybe you don't want breeding, but you do want, uh, I don't know, some, some other thing that, I, that I've done a video on. Maybe you want the combat system uh, that we're going to do today. So it's up to you to mix and match. Uh, and so I'm going to be writing this battle system without having any skills in it. I, I don't want there to be a requirement that you watch any particular video. Uh, but I think, unlike most videos, I will be alluding to that other video um, a lot to, because, it's just, again, it's just such a natural pairing to have a level up system and a combat system. So anyway, let's get to it, get to the code. I'm going to stop this thing running just so I don't forget to do so later. Uh, I think I'll start by making a representation of the battle uh, to be stored to the database. Uh, my thinking is, you know, you maybe you start the combat and you're a couple turns in, but you need to go away and you close the tab. I don't want the whole battle to be forgotten. Uh, the other thing is we don't want the battle to be uh, remembered on by the client. Like we don't want the, I don't know, if you've, if you've done much, I mean, it's kind of weird because we're doing all C sharp here, but if, you, if you've done other web development, the server and the client are much more clearly separated and you don't want to trust that on the front end, they're following all the rules of combat because you can poke around and, and cheat at things. And we've seen that. I don't have a good example now. And also the application is stopped. But we've seen examples where like a button is disabled, but it's really easy to just go in in your browser and say, yeah, undisable that button. I want to click it anyway. Um, I forget which video that was, but, but I showed that off in another video. And maybe I'll show off something like that here. It's very easy to kind of cheat on what is seen here on the browser and, and just alter things. So you never want to rely on on data that's accessible to the user. Um, something else uh, I don't know, but you know, if you put data in cookies, if, you, if you've worked with cookies before, that's not a safe place either. All those things can be modified. Sorry, I went to the wrong tab. There's a storage tab and you can see all these, these things. And, and most people won't know to go here and change things, but you wouldn't want to save the current battle in cookies because if a player doesn't know what they're doing, they're just gonna come in here and say, okay, his hit points are at one now, he's dead <laughs> or whatever. So. We want to store things in the database. The database is a safe location. The player does not have direct access to the database, and you shouldn't write code that would give the player direct access to the database uh, for that same reason. Um, so anyway, all that being said, let's put the battle into a database table. Uh, numerous good reasons to do it. So he's going to ask me silly questions. <laughs> you probably don't need to worry about that. Um, depends on your IDE if you would even get asked that and other things. Um, off topic. So back on topic, all of the tables in pet game, and this is just a pet game thing, clearly, because it says pet game, is they should extend from pet game table, and that gives them all an ID column. Um, we can see ID here. Here are my pets. Uh, here are my players. They all have an ID column. And we know that all of our tables are going to want that. It's a useful way to refer to tables. Um, and so pet game table uh, is what is used for all of the tables. That also lets you do some fancy things later if you want to make um, functions operate on any table, uh, but don't care which one. As long as it's got an ID, it could be helpful. But I don't know, that's also off topic, so let's not talk about that. So what are the properties of a battle? Um, battle is going to be related to a player. There's going to be a definite player who's involved. Interesting, it's like it can hear me speak. Um, but I'm going to make that be uh, the player ID is the first thing. That's the actual column that will appear in the database, so uh, similar to how pets have an owner ID. Uh, but we would like a helpful thing. Um, we would like probably quick access to the player. And so I'm going to add a record to the player. Um, or sorry, not a record, um, just a reference to the player. 
and this is populated automatically by entity framework. I mean, it right? It's an object as a whole player thing. Obviously, it's not going to add uh, a whole player column or something in here. Um, so anyway, I, I don't know. If you're familiar with entity framework, you've seen this and you're super familiar. If you haven't used any framework, it's just a helpful way. Um, and there is a naming convention. It's important that this thing is called player ID, and then this is player without the ID. And that also signals to any framework, okay, I know that these two things are about the same thing. And that's purely by convention. It's just based on the name that it knows that. So if you have a typo or something, it's not going to know. Um, anyway, uh, let's also have a pet ID. GitHub Copilot is auto-completing for me. I know I've called out GitHub Copilot before. No one's paying me to say this, but it's a really useful tool and you should check it out um, for reasons like this. It just understands like, oh, do you want to have a pet thing? You just press tab and you accept its suggestion and it's great. Opponent ID. That's an interesting suggestion from GitHub Copilot, but that's not where I'm going. I'm going to make these paddle or battles. I was going to say paddles. I'm going to make these battles be against other monsters, not other players. Um, maybe that's where the P came from in, in paddles. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have a monster name or something. Um, to store the monster's name. And then we might also have, I don't know about monster level, but uh, let's say max health. Um, whoops, monster max health. So interesting, is it going to, yep, normal health, that's true. And then attack, kind of, I think I want to have, I don't know, depends on how you want to do it. I was thinking of doing dice rolling. So I don't know, if you've played tabletop role playing games or even board games, you might have seen notation that's right like this, where you're going to roll two, two dice that are six sided, and you're going to add a four to it. Rather than keeping that string in the database, because that's a little dangerous. What if, I don't know, something goes wrong, and the plus goes missing, and now it's like 2d64 or something, and, or I don't know. I don't know. It's just weird to hold a string that means something rather than hold a string that where all you have to take apart its parts, just store the individual values. So I think that's what I'm going to do is where I was going with all that. I will say this is the monster. Um, let's call it like attack dice. And then we'll have like, yep, dice sides. That sounds like a good name and any kind of, yeah, a bonus. Perfect. So that would be the thing to add at the end. So in our example, it was 2d6 plus four. If that's what you wanted the monster to do, then it would be stored a two here and a six there and a four there. But again, you don't have to do this at all. Maybe you're like a dice complicated my game isn't for nerds. Um, <laughs> I just want to have a minimum and maximum. Although I guess if you're doing level up systems in combat, so maybe it's already low. Well, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, you could just do monster like attack min and attack max and just have it be a straight range between those two values. Or maybe you want to have just like a fixed value, but then express some percent modifier that it could be up or down. So you have like monster attack and then monster, you know, attack variation percent or something, you know, whatever, whatever makes the most sense for the kind of combat system you're going for. Um, I don't know, but for sake of demonstration, I'm going to do dice because I don't know, dice are gamey. Um, let's put dice in. And I think this is kind of it. Maybe what we should say, oh gosh, there's a stink bug on my table and I hate it. Um, let me pause. I'm going to throw that thing away. I'm back. Uh, I live in a place that gets a lot of stink bugs, especially when it starts to get warmer. Um, this apartment in particular is really, I don't know, I moved in last year and oh my God, I've never seen so many stink bugs in my life. Um, that one was like on its back and doing some weird like maneuver to try and flip itself over, which uh, unfortunately the stink for the stink bug was very eye catching. Uh, otherwise, I may have never noticed it. Um, and by doing that, it made both of our lives worse because I was stressed out and now the bug is flushed down the toilet. I used to throw them out, but like there was literally one weekend where I just every hour would get up and there were eight more of them <laughs> coming through the door. And I was like, yep, you guys don't get put outside anymore. You get flush down the toilet. Anyway, fun times. Let's continue with the battle system. Now that my battle with the, that bug is complete. Don't even remember exactly where we left off, but it looks like it's time to do one more thing. The pets need health. So my thinking here is um, I would like to let you change out pets. I don't know if I'll get to that in this video, uh, but the reason for keeping the, both the player and the pet here, because if you go to a pet, right, it has the player on it. There's no reason so, right, we could infer the player by looking at the pet. But I think I would li like to let you change the pet in and out. Maybe you're fighting a big dragon. He's really big and scary. There's no way you're going to beat him with just one pet, so you rotate the pets in and out. Or you just want to do something Pokemon style. 
Um, it's also conceivable that you would like your system for there to be multiple pets engaged in the battle, not just one, right? I've made an assumption here that there's only going to be one. Again, there's like so many ways to do this stuff. So um, maybe, you know, you can follow along for now and then make tweaks later. Or maybe you want to make tweaks as you go. You'll know what you're comfortable with. But for this video, I'm going to say one pet. And I'm not even going to, I know it would take too long. I'm not going to make the UI to let you switch out pets. Uh, but that capability is there. Uh, so anyway. Uh, I think we do need to go with the pets, though, and say that they should have health and maximum health. And I think, I think I'll replace energy. Uh, the game, as it comes, I don't know, when you download it, has this concept of energy. And it's really just there to demonstrate, like, feeding the pet. Um, it goes out exploring. And, you know, when it explores, it loses energy. So you can only explore so much before you have to feed it again. I don't know, just to give some sense of a kind of a game that you can make. And cool, that's a neat sense, and I think our sense now is like, well, in this video is, we want a combat system, so energy isn't really our resource, it's going to be health. So I'm going to make health, and I'm going to make max health as well, and I think this will be computed. 4 plus level is interesting, I think we'll do 10 plus level. Um, so my thinking is, you know, with this, is we'll say, okay, every pet starts with 10 hit points, every level it gets 1. Uh, if you followed along with the previous video and added stats, this might be a place where you say, oh, this is like 10 plus your stamina times two, or I don't know, whatever you want to do. Um, again, we don't have stats in this video, so I'm just going to do 10 plus level. Uh, something else I would like to do, though, this 10 and this 10 really represent the same thing. And this is the default value for, for new pets, um, so who will have a level of zero. So I think we that should really be a constant. We want to say, like, this is the, I don't know, base health. Uh, and the reason is just so that if we change it later, we don't have to worry about changing both of those tens. And it's reasonable that we might want to refer to base health elsewhere in the code, right? It is this important concept <laughs> in the game. Uh, so yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, we, and, and again, if we, won't, if we ever changed base t health, if we we're like maybe 12 is a better value for reasons, or we decide we're bumping it up, maybe we're going like bigger numbers, we're going to bump up to 100. Um, whatever. Uh, it's good to have the number in one place to name it. It's also just good for readability. Why 10? Oh, because it's the base health. Uh, so anyway, lots of reasons to name your, your values. I kind of talked about that in other places. This should probably be named something. And now I want to say it again. This is a good reason because you want to know that this 10 isn't the same as that. And if you just saw bunches of 10s around, it's possible. To, are they the same 10 conceptually? Or are they, or are they different things? Like, no, this isn't about base health. This is some experience multiplier things. So that's another reason to give things names is the same number really might be meaning something different. And you, and you want that clear to other developers on your, you know, if you're making this with a friend or, or even just yourself in three months when you've forgotten what the code looked like. So anyway, the reason I came to this line, line 29, is it occurred to me when you level up, this is the code for leveling up level plus plus, maybe we ought to reset the health of the of the pet. That's a thing. Whoops. That's a thing that uh, games do. I think having said that, though, I also want to reference something else from the previous video that I talked about is the mechanics should reflect the feeling that your game is going for. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense for like a heroic RPG where you're going to defeat evil or whatever and, and be victorious. Uh, you, you want these like really friendly and empowering mechanics like I leveled up, I get all this, you know, woo, and you express it in the UI sparkles attack damage goes up by three and your health is fully restored because right we're, again we're being as empowering as possible in those moments but it could be that you're making a more like uh tense game or survival kind of game where you know every scrap is is difficult to come by and that's the kind of feeling you want in that case you might want not want to uh fully restore the the player or the pet's health um so yeah again like kind of think about the kind of feeling you're going for um and that and also if you're wrong, right, maybe you do the mechanics and you're like, yeah, you know, it was, I, I thought that it was going to make a good scrappy survivalist feel to not fully heal up the player when they level up. But really, we like those like moments, those those brief moments of like, oh, my gosh, I got this huge bonus and that that will let me push through. You know, maybe, maybe you just find through gameplay because of how the me mechanics come together that you would like to, after all, <laughs> fully heal the, the player or pet when they level up. Um, yeah, don't be, I guess what I'm saying is don't be afraid to change the mechanics to get the feeling. The, the, the feeling of the game is more important than the mechanics. The mechanics should support the feeling. And you'll find out by, by playtesting, by watching people play, 
um, I don't know, watch videos on these topics. There's tons of videos by people way smarter than I am um, about all that kind of stuff. Uh, so anyway, I don't know. Sorry, more segue. I, I have this. I don't know. I keep going on these crazy tangents. All right. So this is all looking good. Um, I think what we need to do now, we've made this code change. Oh, we've got some errors, squiggly red underlines. I know what these are. So I was going to say, we've made a code change for the database, right? We have a, a, a code representation of the tables in the database, but we want those changes reflected in the database. We don't want to see energy here anymore. We want to see health. Uh, we don't, and, and we want to see the new battle table and we're not seeing that. Um, however, and maybe I should just illustrate this. So you, you can't make, I've mentioned this before, we make these migrations. So we would call this like, um, you know, adding battle stuff. I don't know. Uh, but spoilers, it's not going to work. It's going to say, because it needs to build your project and squiggly underlines, red underlines means, uh, there's a code problem. This isn't going to compile. This isn't going to build. Build failed. Uh, it suggests something we could find or run to find the errors, but the IDE is helpful and tells us these errors. And yes, it's about energy. I removed energy from the game. And as mentioned, this game comes with a bunch of stuff all about energy. So let's tidy those up. I think I'm going to get rid of do explore entirely. Um, we're not going to have all these exploring mechanics. So explore calls like something happens, something awesome happens, all this stuff. We're going to get rid of all that. Uh, this game isn't about exploring anymore, apparently. It's about battles. For feeding, let's go ahead and keep the feeding in as a way to restore them. Um, you know, I'll probably make a video about adding inventory to the game or health potions or something that you would feed them those specific things or something. But um, for now, let's just leave in the base do feed um, or not. Again, if you've got a better idea or maybe you've already made your own inventory system, maybe you've got your own ideas for this. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and do all that. So clamp, by the way, says take this value, which is health plus three. Make sure it falls within zero and 10, but we would like that to be the pet's maximum health. Uh, and we'll assign that back to health. So we're saying increase it by three and just make sure that if for some reason it's less than zero, make sure to put it to zero. Um, and if it's greater than max health, which is probably more realistically what we're actually worried about, cap it to the maximum health. And then we'll say om nom nom, pet health is now at, whoops, popped up. Press some crazy keyboard shortcut there. I don't even know what I pressed to pop that up. Um, but apparently I was ready to press that escape button and cancel. I don't really know how that happened. Anyway, um, pet name is now at health. Sounds good. And then, yeah, we'll get rid of do explore. And then here, this pet card. So if we look, it's kind of dimmed out because, uh, I've closed the, you know, it's like, oh no, the game's not running. I can't do things. Uh, but we have this energy on the bottom and that should be health instead. So, um, let's pass in health. And I think we're going to want to pass in max health. So I'll do this. Yeah, I was relying on GitHub Copilot a little bit there to complete. It is really good at seeing those basic patterns in code. Um, so this is something else I haven't talked about explicitly, but you can probably figure out and infer and the squiggly yellow underlines are telling me. So pet card expects an energy value. I haven't given it one. Uh, also, I've written health and max health here, and it's like, I don't know what those properties are, and so it's calling them different. Bold, bright blue means got it in this case, apparently, and green, which is a color of goodness, but again, in this case means no, that's not a property to understand for your, your pet card. Um, I don't know, it, it's interesting. I, I feel like they should have colored these differently. This green text is valid here, but that's because it's not a component that you wrote. And also there's silly cases where it's valid even for you. Anyway, they could have done something better with the colors here, but we don't live in that world. So uh, we'll deal with the colors we got. Um, and it might depend on your IDE, maybe Visual Studio or VS Code or something that's like way better at that. I don't know. Anyway, let's jump into the pet card and we can see it's expecting an energy. We would like that to be health. I'm also going to copy paste this line for max health. And then here, I will say health out of max health, and we'll say hit points. All right. I think that fixes all the bugs. I've done a lot of changes without verifying that any of them actually work, which is a little scary. Um, but I also can't run the code yet. It's going to get confused trying to pull health and max health out of the database because they don't exist. We really need to get the migrations going. So I probably could have done this in a way that would have, I don't know, let us make the changes more incrementally. But oh, well, so be it. Too late. Let's run this migration. And now when I run the game, it will update the database. There is, by the way, if you don't want to wait to run the game to update the database, um, you can do you can do another thing. You can look up. I'm sorry, there's so many things I could spend forever talking about. Um, but I have set up something in the pet game codes so at the moment you run it, 
it make sure to update the database. And so yeah, let's look at that. If we refresh here, will this refresh work? Uh, nope, this refresh is confused. Let me try. Here we go. Okay, we now have health, which has been set to our energy value, it looks like, which is probably not what we wanted. Uh, max health, we don't see here because that's that computed, if you recall, if we go back to pet here, max health isn't a real property that exists in the database. It's just computed on the fly out of base health plus level. So that, that doesn't go in the database. That's how that works. If you wanted it to go in the database, then you would do, whoops, oh my gosh, the IDE is trying to be too smart, but you would make it a get set thing and whatever. And, and maybe there are reasons why, you know, maybe you want a game where uh, max health is something that, I don't know, you, I'm thinking like Chrono Trigger for some reason where they would have tabs that you could use, but whatever, an item you use on the character to permanently increase something, maybe a permanent increase straight to max health is something you want. Maybe you don't want it purely derived based on level and stamina or, or, or something. I mean, there's multiple ways you could do that. You could have this be like add a max health bonus and have that be a real fill, field or you could have the whole max health just be something on the database and whatever. Again, lots of ways to do things, pros and cons to everything. Um, you'll figure out what's right for your game. Uh, I probably didn't want health to do this though. Uh, pro you know, since we changed it, right? Now that we've released this change to the world, people with pets with zero energy now unexpectedly have dead pets. <laughs> so that's a little unfortunate. Um, there's a thing we could have done to prevent that. I've gone over this in other databases. So, or other databases, other videos, um, when you have a migration, which again is what we generated, that renamed this column, um, there are things you can do to update the data along with this migration. I cover that in another video, so I won't do it here. Um, oh, let me unzoom. Uh, but if I view my house, now you can see two out of 12 hit points, great. Zero out of 11, less great. Let's feed. Madeline is now at three, six, nine and 11. Wonderful. So I can get all my pets back up to full health by feeding them. Again, in a real game, you probably want some sort of, you know, well, if I can do this in an unlimited fashion, then why don't I just feed and instantly get up to 12? Um, all right, let's try and make the battle system. I'm a little concerned that I'm at 22 minutes. Um, but let's just keep going. You know, battle systems are hard. I don't know if, if, if the video goes a little long. Um, maybe that's just how it'll be. Um, so let's go to my house now, and I would like a way to start a new fight. Um, probably, I removed that explore button, but I think I'll just add back a button that starts a, a fight with that particular pet. Um, and uh, so we'll say do fight, um, fight a monster. We'll just say fight. Um, and, you know, if you want to switch the pets mid combat, that's fine. But this is just a convenient way to start a fight with a particular pet. I don't know. Again, you might want maybe make a whole separate page where it's the arena and you select the level of monster you want to fight and then you select the pet. And, you know, you might have a whole other UI specifically for starting a fight. That'll definitely make the video take forever. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> maybe something for another video. Um, but uh, yeah, let's code up this do fight thing. So I'll just make a new function here. So credit let's see, into the task. Do fight um, with the selected pet. So I think the first thing we want to do, we want to. We're going to want to change this later. Let's just do it here. There's other things you could do to make this nicer. But I, when you click do fight, I think what I want to do is first check, is there already a battle that you're engaged in? You shouldn't have two fights running simultaneously. I don't know why not just because I decided so for my game. Maybe in your game you do. Maybe in your game every pet can be engaged in its own battle. Again, this is all up to you. Uh, for what I'm coding right now, I'm going to say one fight per player uh, and you rotate of the pets. So let's find an existing battle if it exists. So uh, sorry, first we need the database. So we'll say get the database factory and ask it to create uh, a reference to the database for me. Again, I've kind of gone into this DB factory thing before in other videos. Um, if it looks confusing, just kind of roll with it and know that this is how you get the database. But you can learn more either in another video or by looking online. Um, DB factory is a very common thing. This is built into Microsoft's any framework thing. So you could also just Google database context factory and learn more about it if you want. Um, but okay, moving on. Uh, we're going to now with this database try and find our existing battle. So we'll say DB. Oh, I didn't do a thing. I didn't do an important thing. Um, did it even make a battles table in here? Oh, I've been such a fool. Okay. Ah, I'm sorry. I forgot one important thing. We've made a new table. I do this at work too. And then I'm always embarrassed and it creates more work for myself. Um, we need to add 
the new table to this pet game database. And this is again because of Entity Framework. Entity Framework needs to know, hey, this table exists. Um, you don't always have to, like if it doesn't matter. It's just best to anyway, because we're going to want to query on this thing, which I was about to do. So we want to know all the battles. And there it is. Um, and now, because I forgot, I'm going to have to make another migration. But that's okay. It doesn't hurt to make more migrations. Um, so let's make uh, add, adding battle table. Let's do the actual thing to add the table to the database. And I'll show off um, what I was talking about. Oh. oh, that's my fault. I left this line incomplete, uh, so that won't compile. That is a minorly annoying thing about the migrations. You're like, why does it matter if my code here is right? The tables are right, whatever. Um, but I'll show off the other thing I was talking about before. You don't have to wait to run the program to update the database. You can just type database update, and that will do it as well. And don't worry, it's not going to like happen twice or something when you run. It's not going to try and make the table again. That won't happen. Uh, but now we will see when I refresh. Now we have the battle table in here with no data in it. But we've got all the columns, monster stuff. Great. OK, so back to what I was doing at my, uh, my house. And now that we have the battle table there, this is why I noticed. I typed db.battles and was like, where's my battles? I'm not seeing them. Ah, I was a fool and didn't add them. Um, we want to find a single battle. Um, interesting. We want to find the battle by player. So we're going to say find the battle where the battle player ID equals the current player. Is that the right thing? Nope, it's just called player here. So player uh, info ID. What is player, current player? That is a thing that's specific to pet game. That doesn't come with Microsoft anything. Um, and you can go and poke at this class, go to declaration um, or implementation and see its various properties. But again, if you just want kind of the TLDR, if you want to know the current player's ID, this is how you do it. Player info, it will whine at you if you don't do the exclamation mark for reasons, which again, Google if you're interested. But <laughs> player info, exclamation mark, dot ID, and that will get you the current player ID. Um, and then we want the first one. And we say first or default, and it's async. Um, because we want to do everything asynchronously if possible, which I have also rambled about in other videos and will not do here for brevity because we need to make a battle system. Uh, so we have found either a battle or none. The, the Or default, by the way. That's a little important thing that I don't think I've talked about. So if you just said first, it, this code would say, all right, I'm going to find you one battle. Guaranteed I'm going to find you one. But what if it doesn't exist in the database? Well, if it doesn't exist, and it throws an exception, and this part of your code will crash. Um, so that's not so great. Unless you really are super duper sure it's in the database, you, you wouldn't want to use first async. You would use first or default. And default means whatever the default value of for a battle is, which is kind of a weird thing to think about in, in some cases um, when we're working with a database especially. Uh, but for, for that, means null. If we found nothing, then we're going to get null out of the uh, database. We can see that here. It says, I'm giving this thing is a battle or or null. That's what the question mark means. We're giving a battle or nothing. Battle? Uh, maybe. Um, so we can check that. We can say if battle doesn't equal null, then you're already engaged in combat. Um, so there's numerous things you could do here. Uh, you could throw an alert, something else. I'm going to say if you click on that, let's just take you to the battle page, which I haven't made yet, um, but we're going to take you there. So I don't think I have it here. Yeah, there is something else that comes from Microsoft, uh, not from Entity Framework this time, but from, why am I blinking on names? Blazor, which is the whole framework that this website is based on. Um, it's a navigation manager. How interesting that GitHub Copilot did that and also called it Navi? Does it know we're making a game and wanted to reference Zelda? I don't know. Um, but yes, we would like a navigation manager. And the navigation manager lets you take the user to other pages via code, right? Right. Just program and say, hey, you're going to another page, right? I know you didn't click on a link to do it, but I'm telling you that's what's happening. <laughs> you're going to another page. So we're going to do that. You say navigator, navigate to, and we type the URL. Perfect. Battle. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. That will do. And then return means we're done with this function, right? We're not executing anything else. We're done. If we found a battle, if it's not null, go to the battle page. That's where you ought to be, um, and then get out of this function. Um, even though this takes you to another page, this function will keep running. Um, so you, you do need to say, get out of here. OK, but what if we didn't find the battle? You clicked fight, you selected your pet, and you clicked fight, and a battle doesn't exist in the database. 
that's kind of the more common case we're expecting. Well, then we want to create that battle. So let's do that. So let's make a new battle. Um, we'll call it new battle. And it will be a new battle. <laughs> Go figure. And there are some required properties. I'm going to put a semicolon here. So and they're required because we said so, you, you may recall. So I made these properties required, the ones that actually exist in the database, because I want that in the code, when I make a new battle, that I don't accidentally forget, right? Like what if I accidentally specified or forgot to specify a monster max health? Well, then it's gonna default to zero because if you don't specify a value for an integer, then it's zero. Um, so I really wanna make sure I don't make that mistake. So this is me putting a limitation on myself. <laughs> uh, so I said, it's required, you must specify, do not forget, right? You, you wanna do that. Um, so let's fill all those in. And again, if you hover over this, why is it red? It tells you player ID must be set, pet ID must be set, the name, the health, the dice, all these things, they must be set. Uh, interesting that GitHub Copilot thinks it knows what to do. Um, interestingly, it's right about some of the things. I'll take those, um, but it's, it's not right about the other things. So let's do a monster name. I think it would be interesting to make a whole function that kind of randomly generates monsters. Uh, I worry that the video is already 30 minutes, so I'm not going to go into that. But you could make a function that um, gives you all this random data, like what's the name of the monster? Um, you know, what should its various stats be? Maybe there's ranges. You could do all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's a good health. Max health is 10. That works. We also want a monster. It was attack dice. So we'll say that these things roll. I don't know. It's a goblin. Yeah, 1d4. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, but it's called... Um, dice sides, and then the bonus can be zero. Hey, that's great. The, the internet, GitHub Copilot even knows what a goblin is. A goblin is weak. It rolls a four-sided die for damage and gets no bonus. This is the truth of goblins. We all know it, and so does GitHub Copilot. Um, yep, that's the other thing we want to add. Now that we've made a new battle, we want to tell the database about it. Um, I would say, I mean, either way, you can explicitly tell any framework, hey, I'm listing, I'm, I'm adding this new battle to the list of battles. But you don't have to do that. Entity Framework is smart, and it knows that because it's a battle, it goes in the list of battles. So you don't have to do the extra typing. You can just say DB, add the new battle. Um, then we save. GitHub Copilot is definitely smart enough to notice that. We've finished. We save the thing. And now I do want to take you. Oh my gosh, GitHub Copilot, stop. You're too smart. Yeah, we want to take you to the battle. Now that we have created the new battle and saved it, we're going to shuttle you off to the battle page. Um, so let's do that. I mean, we could run this right now. Yeah, you know what? I changed my mind. Let's run this. Let's run and confirm that this works. It's, it's always good. We don't want to assume that all of our code is right. What if we did something wrong? So I'm going to load up the database here again. And I've mentioned this before. I'm using Heidi. Heidi SQL. It's free. That's why there's a donate button on it. Um, you should go check it out. It's useful. Um, there were a couple of videos I recorded where it was crashing all the time. And then I download the newest version. It's not crashing anymore. So whatever that bug was, they fixed it. I don't know if that was just for that version or what. But anyway, let's click fight. It took us to slash battle. Right, we haven't made a battle page, fair enough. But what I'm curious about is, has it recorded a new battle? It has. So we have a goblin. He's got his stats. If I go back and say, fight again, I would like to see that it didn't make another one. So let's just verify that. Perfect. There's still only the one battle. So all the code is working so far. Wonderful. Um, let's make <laughs> that new battle page. So not the database folder. Don't care about migrations. Let's make a new page here. Um, you may notice, I've mentioned this before, there is a thing for making a, a page. I'll, I'll try it. I feel like it comes with too much stuff when I do it. Yeah, see, why does it come with all this stuff? Oh, wait, and also made a CSHTML? Oh, that was the wrong thing entirely. Oh, that's doubly a bad reason. Uh, your IDE might have better options. Oh, I'm confused. Sorry, there's a page option here. I always get that confused. Um, okay, battle page. Okay, that's not too much stuff. So maybe I was just confused and I should use make the new page, but in the different kind of page. Um, so anyway, that's a fair page. Um, let's now, uh, when they hit this battle page, make sure that there is a, um, a battle. And if there isn't one, we'll kick them back to their house, right? Oh, we also want, this is something else to do. Uh, you shouldn't be able to do this uh, unless you are logged in. I believe that's correct. <laughs> now I'm worried that I forgot. Yes, authorized. Also, oh my gosh, what happened here? Why is it all angry battle? Oh, funny. Okay, yep, this is a mistake on my part. So I have made a new page called battle, and now it's confused here. When I say new.battle, 
it's defaulting. This is closer. You could think of it that way. It's in the same namespace. It's in the same folder. So it says, oh, battle. It must be that battle, not the battle that's defined over here. So there's a couple ways you could fix that. <laughs> if um, I think it's better to avoid the duplicate names at all, but you could do this. You could say, no, 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 I want a database dot tables dot battle. So you can specify this path, which um, by the way, is also reflected here. And that's even the more real thing. Like if this said table, um, it will complain because that's not the same name as the folder. It wants it to be the same name as the folder, but it's not required. Um, so that could get you in trouble. With, I don't know. But anyway, maybe I shouldn't have even pointed that out. Um, the other thing you could do is just name it something different. So maybe it would be better. It would make your life easier to just call this battle page instead, which I think is what I'm going to do, um, because I'm also going to want to reference the battle entity table entity in this page. So I'm going to rename this thing. I'm going to rename this to battle page, even though nothing else has had page in the name. Maybe that's a little wacky, but I don't know. Maybe you decide at this point to go through and name all of the things page to avoid such confusion. Um, OK, we have a page called battle. Uh, now we want uh, on initialized async. There it is. So I've mentioned this before. This is a blazer thing. All of the pages and and all components, um, such as that pet card, not just pages, they have a bunch of these lifecycle events like on initialized, on after it has been rendered, on the parameters were changed, um, which is more relevant for something like pet card where these parameters might change. Um, I don't remember them all off of the top of my head, but with your IDE, you can type override and it will show you what all these things were, as well as some others. These ones that um, don't have the little key icon on it, at least in, in a writer, which is the IDE I'm using. These come from somewhere else. There are lots of functions you can override. So I shouldn't just blindly say, if you do override, you'll find the lifecycle events. Yes, you will find those. You will also find other things that are overridable, not just the uh, lifecycle events. But the lifecycle events are going to come up. Um, so anyway, here they all are. Um, I want, when you first hit the page, which means on initialized, when, when this thing is just started up, uh, to find any battle that you may have and also kick you out if you don't have one. So. Let's get, and actually, I'll just copy this from the My House page. So this thing, this DB factory, and also the current player, we're going to want that. Also, we're going to want to kick you out if you're not supposed to be here. So all three of these, we can copy all of them. Um, and by the way, right, we copy pasted, so we know this text isn't bad. Um, the white underline on the red text means I can't compile right now, but I, the IDE, can help you out. Press Alt-Enter. I think in Visual Studio, it's Control dot alt that? I don't remember. Anyway, for a uh, writer, it's control enter and you say import the missing references and it will go and add these this code that was required for this to be a technically correct. I mean, I say technically it is this is required for, for the C sharp language and the IDE is smart enough to write that code for you. You don't even need GitHub code by it to do that part. Um, so anyway, let's get the database. So we'll ask the factory to make us another database. Oops. I don't like that this happens. I've mentioned this before. When you do override and let it autocomplete, it never puts the async here, and I don't know why. I feel like that should be the default. There are times when you wouldn't have async task, but mostly you want async task, and I feel like the, that should be the default. And maybe in your IDE it is. In mine it isn't. Uh, let's find the battle. So battle equals, we want to, again, find the battles. We want the uh, first where the battle, and I'm intentionally doing this slightly different from last time just to illustrate. Uh, where the player ID equals the player info ID. Um, okay, yeah, so you can either say where, right? Last time, I'll just go and look at it. You can say where this condition and then do a first and default, but you can also just combine them and say first or default and give your, your where condition. You can combine them. So that's handy. Uh, maybe it's even short enough that you'd pull it all into one line. Why not? Uh, all right, if the battle is null, now you can't be here, right? In this case, we're saying, what? There's no battle? You came to the battle page? What are you doing here? We want to navigate you, and let's just go to, I believe the URL is my house. We can double check. Yep, it's my house. And then let's GTFO. And I think that's kind of it. Um, we're going to want to show now. We, we don't really have any page. We've, we've got a ton of code, and none of it is visible HTML that anyone can look at, right? We need to start doing all this stuff. Um, so let's do that. We want to show the battle. I guess we'll say, um, yeah, we can just say battle. Uh, but we want to 
have that battle loaded so that we can reference it up here. So let's make a thing to store the current battle. And right, once again, it's saying I can get this for you. Uh, and let's assign it here. Uh, something else that needs to happen. So why I say always do this stuff async, looking up things in the database can take time. It takes time for, again, this is a web page. Um, it, it might be someone far away from you, uh, far away from your server, rather, or maybe they just have a slow internet connection, and it might take a while for um, they've landed on this page, but now it needs to reach over across the internet, um, run this code that, that tries to get the battle out of the database, and then send that back over the wire, and that all takes time. And in the meanwhile, they're looking at this page. So even though we're going to throw them out of here when the battle is null here, it could be that until this loading happens, the battle is null. They could be looking at this page even though they don't have a battle, just because it takes a long time for the battle to load, um, which is why we say these things are asynchronous and that we are awaiting their completion because they take time in, in the real world. For your computer, I've mentioned this before, right? It's going to go super fast because everything is really close. It's all in this computer. Um, but in the real world, it could take longer. So if the battle is null, we'll just say something like loading. Uh, else, we will show the actual thing. And actually, we can put this up here. Um, and then we can draw your pet that's involved in the battle. Uh, there's something else we want to do for that. Uh, so yeah, let's start to do that. So we want a pet card. And we want to show the two characters who are engaged in battle. So let's just do something. We'll say, um, I don't know, how do we want to lay this out? Maybe I do like a side by side thing. That would look nice. It kind of assumes you have the space. I don't know if you're on a like narrow phone, maybe you, you wouldn't quite have the space to do this, but uh, I don't know. I'll do it here, do some kind of little layout and then I don't know, show the monster. Um, but for the pet, we need to sh uh, show all the various details and it needs all those details. That's why it's whining at us. It says, hey, I expected a name, but you didn't give it to me. Well, it's going to be the battle, oops, Right, it's a string, so we need that battle.pet.name. But there is something else we need to do here, and this is kind of a hint. So it's saying, hey, pet is possibly null. Maybe the pet data isn't there. That's a little silly in our minds, maybe, because we know that the battle requires a pet be assigned. In fact, it was required we gave a pet ID, right? It has to, we have to, we made it a required field. But when you fetch these things in, right, a pet ID, the number, is very different from the whole pet object. We don't get the whole pet object for free. Um, we need to say and tell Entity Framework that we want to include some of these other things. I want to include the whole pet object. It might feel a little annoying that you have to tell it to do that, and I'll jump to declaration here, just in mind, right? So pet ID, that's required. Pet isn't required. The reason why, when you ask Entity Framework to fetch the battle, you don't necessarily want it to get all these objects, all these other related things as well. Um, for example, player, good example, we're, if, if, if it loaded everything automatically, all the data, all the related columns, it would get the player. But when it got the pet, it would get the player again, because the pet also has the player. And you can imagine with a bigger game, with more things, maybe the pet has equipment, and so it has a reference to an item in your house. And then the item has an owner, too, who's the pet again, or the, the player again. And so now you've got the player three times, um, you know, and I, maybe the item has some other properties. And you, you end up, like, loading tons of extra data um, if it was all fetched automatically. So the developers of Entity Framework were like, hey, let's not subject people to that by default. The default behavior is we don't get any of those related things. If you want them, you have to ask for them. So if you want the pet, you have to ask for the pet and all, and all of its information. If I wanted the player, I would say either I could get the player here. Um, when, and I don't know, just to, to demonstrate, if I said now pet.player, which is a, or sorry, it's pet.owner, which is a player, um, I'm not going to have that information still, because that's a, kind of a different path. And there are ways you could get that too if you needed to go nested. But anyway, I don't think we're going to need the player on this page, but we definitely need to know the pet so we can draw them. So let's do all those things. There's an image, which is the battle pet uh, image. And the exclamation here is required because, again, from the, the code's perspective, it says, I don't know, you may or may not have the pet loaded. Um, whoops. We know that we asked for it down here, but the code up here doesn't know. So we have to say exclamation, I promise I loaded it. That's what that's about. Um, and let me see what are the other 
required things here. It needs max health, right? So we'll say max health equals pet max health and health. Let's see if Copilot can do it for me. It sure can. What else do we need? Level. Ah, we just we display the level of the pet. The reason that we need um, at signs here, this is another silly like design choice of Blazor where I'm not super in love with it. But because these are strings, it says, hmm, that's ambiguous. Do you mean the text? Right, name is just some text. It's not a number. So Blazor's like, I don't know. Do you mean the literal text, capital B, lowercase a, lowercase d? Or do you mean, and, and that's the default assumption it makes, or do you mean that you want, you know, the code, the battle, get the pet property, get the name. So whenever it's a text thing here, a string, you have to disambiguate for it and be like, nah, I mean the code. And so you, you can do the at here. And if it's just easier for your brain to think about, hey, I always put an at sign, always put an at sign if, if that's what is easier for you to think about. Um, but yeah, you don't have to for anything that isn't text. Bleh. Whatever. Again, maybe they could have made different choices there. I'm sure there were discussions and, it, you know, I doubt it was made accidentally. I'm sure they thought about this and weighed the pros and cons and decided this was the best way to go. But anyway, that'll draw the pet. Um, we don't have anything to show the monster. Let's run this again and see that the battle page now works. Um, this video might truly take a while and I apologize. So let's view the house. Let's click fight. We should already be in a fight with Tidbit, even if we click Madeline. Yep, it's still a fight with Tidbit. That's who is in a fight. Um, we see the text show the monster here. Again, I was thinking I would put these side by side. Um, so let's do that. I'm just going to do this all in line, which may be not the best practice, but this is going to be display flex. And I'm going to do a flex direction of row. So we're saying we want these things in a row. And let's put like 2EM gap. 2EMs, it means the font, like, EMs is a font size measurement, so we're kind of saying two character heights of width, which is kind of weird. It's generally nice to um, specify your, your padding in terms of font size, because um, if you increase the font size, you usually want the spacing to increase, you know, in, in a similar amount. If, if, the, if the text is bigger, then probably everything is bigger. So it's just useful to um, refer to things by in, in relation to font units of measure, such as EMs. So anyway, that's another little side thing. CSS, a whole other topic. Um, let's see what it looks like. Great. And you can't even see the gap here because we're saying show the monster. So I'm going to leave that up to you. You got to draw your own goblin, draw it in here. But we should show the, um, the monster's uh, health. And in fact, maybe we just use a pet card for this. It might be that um, that's a bad decision in the long term. Maybe as you go, you find that monsters are different enough. Like we're going to show a level, but we don't really have levels for monsters. So that's kind of weird. It's going to show a level zero. I don't know. I'll leave that that to you to clean up. Um, but let's do so this is the battle monster name. And then certainly we have max health. And I'm going to let um, get the copilot do some of that. So the monsters, again, they don't have a level, which is kind of weird. So I guess I'll say zero, um, at least not as I've written them. Maybe you want your monsters to have a level, and then it makes sense to use a pet card, but maybe you don't want them. You know, maybe I should have a monster card instead of a pet card. But again, kind of for the sake of time, uh, but also to demonstrate, you know, maybe this is valid. Uh, there's also ways to make these parameters optional, right? You don't have to say that level is required, and then you could just not show the level ribbon if there is no level. So there's... Lots of options. Again, it kind of depends on, on how you go with it. Um, I'm not going to show an image. Again, you'll have to draw a goblin yourself and specify the goblin. But let's see that this works. Um, just, yeah, I don't know why I did it that way. Okay, so here's the goblin. He's got 10 out of 10 hit points. We're not seeing anything. Um, I'm going to put, I don't know, versus or something. Let's reload again. Just to, I don't know my house, do the fight. All right, versus there's styling you could do to make this be centered. It looks kind of silly when it's all the way up here. Again, I'm not going to, gosh, I'm really tempted though, but no, I'm not going to do Oh, but I could. No, 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 let's not do it. Okay, we need to make this thing work. Okay, um, what kind of moves are we going to have? I'm just going to say there is an attack move and that's it. Um, you know, again, for your pets, maybe depending on its species, it has certain moves or maybe when it levels up, they get moves, you know, like Pokemon, and you only have four, and you can do, you know, whatever. You can do whatever you want here. That's totally going to be up to you. Definitely beyond the scope of this video, even if it wasn't already 50 minutes long. Um, but I'm just going to make an attack button. So outside this little 
columned kind of view here. Let's make a container for the buttons. I like to put the buttons in their own paragraph tag just in case there was more below. I don't know. It's kind of a silly thing to do. You don't have to do that. Um, anyway, this is going to be a button and we'll call it attack. And then we'll say on click, we're going to call the function called do attack. Um, yeah, there's other things to say about that. I'm not going to do it. Um, <laughs> so let's make our task called do attack. And we want to do a few things here. So how much damage should your pet deal? Um, you know, again, maybe that if you followed along with the video on adding stats, probably that's based on like the strength or something or some other stat. Um, but let's go ahead and make on the pet. I'll just do this because it won't take long. Where's the where's a quick reference to pet? Here we go. Pet name. I'll just jump to declaration of that. I just wanted to find some quick shortcut to pet rather than try to find it on the left here, although it is right here, but whatever. Um, perhaps my laziness cost me. Uh, in that instance, uh, but let's make some damage. So let's say like min damage, I don't know, is like level plus two. And then we'll say max damage is level, sure, plus five, he says get hook poke out. So I did dice for monsters. I'm not doing dice here for some reason. Maybe you want to, you know, again, I don't know how you're going to set up your moves. I don't know if you want dice. It's really up to you again to make a system that is the system you want and that creates the feeling you want for your game and all that sort of stuff and it, you know synergizes with the theme whatever um, if you're going for a sci-fi theme then you might call your stats different things and maybe for sci-fi you think showing numbers as percents is more sci-fi you know whatever it's it, these are all things that, that you'll know for your game um, so the reason though I wanted to add those is I want to ask the pet how much damage to deal I feel like that should be you know, the pet is the pet, it knows how much damage to deal. Again, unless it was spells, unless it was like moves that you were selecting from, then the move probably knows how much damage it deals, and blah, 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 blah. But, um, so let's say pet damage. That is going to be a random number. Oops, random shared. So we can say, give me a random number between the pets, oh, sorry, between the battle pet minimum damage. Oh, yeah, so this is another thing. So this code, same issue. We we know because we program this thing. There's no way you're going to click do attack unless the battle is actually set, right? Not null. But this function do attack. It's like I don't know. Do attack could be called freaking anywhere. <laughs> um, so you can't just call battle like this and without without saying no. I super duper promise. Another way you could super duper promise and get rid of both of these exclamation marks if you wanted is you could say if battle pet equals null. Well, let's do it this way. If battle equals null or the battle pet equals null, we can say get out of here. Um, so now, because we have put this up top of the function, the code here knows, okay, you're good. I know that battle isn't null. I also know that battle.pet isn't null. We're good to go. So that's a, uh, and, and, I, and I think I, I would generally recommend that. Like if, if you can get away from exclamation mark, because exclamation mark, when you type exclamation mark, you're saying, I promise, super duper promise, that it's not null. But what if you're wrong, right? What if you do call do attack somehow on accident? Um, so it's it's generally good if you can to write the code to avoid exclamation marks entirely. But sometimes it's just way too much work to do so. And you're like, look, I'm comfortable just saying I super duper promise. So this is again, uh, pros and cons to everything. Um, remember that for random number generation for silly computery reasons, um, the the upper bound here, the, the second number, the maximum is always exclusive. So this would, if without the plus one, it would get us a, a value from min damage to one less than max damage. Annoying in some circumstances, useful in others, uh, but annoying for game type things, certainly a lot of the time. But here we go. So that's how much damage that the pet will deal. So we can say, great, that sounds lovely. And we can also say that if the um, monster health now is less than or equal to zero, then you have one. There's a lot of things you might do here. And again, if we weren't approaching an hour, I might do them. You might pop up an alert that says you won, you got some experience points, all these things. Um, I'm going to say it's up to you. If you look at the existing code or the previous code, rather, how was it getting experience points after exploring and saving them and all those things? I'm going to leave that up to you. So I'm going to say to do um, award pet experience points, um, save, save changes and return home um, and maybe show a dialogue show a dialogue and return home and i think 
if you open a dialogue with, um, if you see how other dialogues opened, I think that the dialogue will stay even if the page moves out from under you. I think that's true. I could be wrong. That's definitely true in Angular, which is a front end framework I have more experience with, honestly. Um, so that, that's what I'm thinking of. So yeah, try it out, but it, but it might work. Um, if not, you can wire up something else there. Um, but anyway, so, and then we would return, right? If monster elf is less than zero, then do all those things and get out of here. And actually, let's, I'll at least do that um, to test. So we should go back to my house. Um, but we're not going to award experience, so we won't see that. Um, otherwise, yep, the monster gets a turn to deal damage. And here we have like a roll. Yep. So roll is available. I have sneakily included this in pet game. Um, there's a library called benmakesgames.randomhelpers. And this is a library that I wrote that comes with a bunch of random number generation helper libraries that are geared toward doing games. And one of the functions it comes with is rolling dice. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's here. Um, it, it's also good for like, and they, they're actually adding this in the newest version of C Sharp, but it's not out yet. But that library also gives you convenience methods for just like pull a random element out of an array, which is something good if you want to pull something out of a loot table, right? You're like, oh, goblins can drop one of three objects. Let's pull one at random. There's like a kind of cumbersome way you can just do that with vanilla C Sharp. Uh, but, the ben, but the Ben Makes Games Random Helpers gives you some easy functions to do that. And you can look up benmakesgames.randomhelpers. Uh, it has a, a help page on the internet that has all the documentation on how to use all of its functions. So it's there. Um, but let, let's use the roll function, which will roll some dice. Uh, and I think if we hover over, it should tell us that, because I did document these functions. Hmm, it's not showing up here. I'm disappointed. Maybe there's something I did wrong. In fact, there must be, because that should show up. Uh, but anyway, let's do the battle. We'll say the monster attack dice, and then the monster, whoops, monster, oh, battle monster <laughs> attack dice sides. And then we will add the battle monster tap bonus. So this is our 2d6 plus 4, or in this case, it's going to be 1d4 plus 0, because that's how strong we made goblins. Um, so, oh, yeah, that'll work. GitHub Copilot says, why don't I reduce your pet health? And we can do, yeah, same thing. If the pet health is less than 0, um, then we need to, um, you know, show a you lost dialogue, or maybe let you choose a new pet. Right, whatever that's going to be. Um, yep, save changes and return home. That all makes sense, and then we can do that. Otherwise, now that we've made all these changes, we do want to save them. That's interesting. Is that what it, GitHub Copilot is going to do for us? It wants to update the battle. I think that's right. I think that'll even update the pet. We can confirm that. Um, oh, one other thing, by the way, if the monster health is less than zero, we need to delete the combat. Same if you're. Health. Let's just say there's a you lose, and um, if you want to add saving or switching out pets, you can do that. But yeah, we want to remove the um, the the battle. So let's do let's make a new function called like um, end battle because the logic's going to be the same. So it's a great opportunity to say, well then let's um, you know, do that. Let's pull that out into a function. Um, and we'll write that in a sec. But otherwise, after you do an attack, we just want to save the changes back and then be done and let you keep going. So keep going with the battle. Uh, but let's write the end battle function. And then I think we're done. Um, this was a long video, but I think this will be it unless there's some sort of bug or something I overlooked. Oh, right. We want to await this. So this is going to um, also await from the factory. And we want to remove it. Ha ha ha, you're so good, GitHub Copilot. And then we want to save changes. Oh, which we didn't do here. We should save changes. OK, and arguably, you could put the navigator navigate to house on in battle. Maybe I'll do that. Um, I don't know. Maybe it should go there, maybe not. I'll leave that up to you. Um, depends on what else you do in, in, in the, uh, yeah, when, I don't know if you're like, oh, I'm going to, you know, whatever. Maybe it would make sense to take this out. That's all I'm saying. Depends on what these cases do. So let's see if that works. I think we're going to have a battle. Again, I didn't give the pet any experience points or do anything like that. It wouldn't be hard to do here, um, but I didn't do it. So let's do the fight. Let's attack. So goblin is down to three. Interesting that's max. Does its max hit points go down as well? That's fun. Ten, four. Yeah, why is its maximum hit points? Did I do that wrong? 
Yeah, I sure did. So this should be monster max health. Let's restart. And we'll, this will be a good proof of concept too, right? It should have saved that Madeline is down to seven and Goblin is uh, down to four. Yep, Madeline is at seven. Goblin's at four out of 10. Attack. I, I saw, I think I saw it briefly. Maybe you can catch that frame. It looked like it was at negative two for a split second before it redirected. There's things you could do about that too. Um, but that's it. Oh my gosh, it took for frickin' ever. Uh, but we have a battle system we can fight. Wonderful. Um, there are other things you might want to do, like, interesting, did it really end up at seven as well? Okay, like, you probably shouldn't be able to select a fight if the pet has zero. Right now it's going to let you do that. Um, attack, attack. Oh, interesting, I saw it go to negative one, but it kind of seems to be capped at, at one here. So yeah, something else is going on you might want to fix up here. Um, I, thought I, I thought we had a... Where is that here? Yeah, so we didn't do something we should do. Ah, let me do that. So when we reduce that the health, again, we want to do that clamp thing we've seen before. You shouldn't be allowed. Oh, no, sorry. I know what's happening. Okay, well, we want both. Okay, let's let's do both these fixes. So battle pet health. We want to subtract the monster damage, and we want to cap this between zero and the pet's maximum health. Again, we're not expecting that it should be going up as a result, so it's probably never, never going to be higher than max health, but it clamp it's just good just you know let's just do it let's just be safe um the other thing that that isn't happening properly is we're not saving i think no we do save after we end the battle uh, but we don't um save the pet so that's what's happening is the pet is losing its health from the last attack but then we just remove the battle and never save the pet changes um so we need to do that we need to after we end the battle we want to update the battle pet. Let's see if that does it. This is a little wacky. I, I, I don't, I think that might be uh, regrettable later. I don't know if that's the best way to do that. Um, but it is all kind of temporary code. So let's fight with you. Two out of 11, one, zero. Okay, now you're properly at zero. It has been saved at the end of the fight. Okay. So that's better. Again, there, and you probably shouldn't be able to start a fight when you're at zero. And it, this, to me, feels a little weird to do, to update and then remove. Maybe it's fine, but this is all kind of stand-in code. When you start actually like assigning experience points, you're going to explicitly save the pet, and, and then you'd remove the battle. So you, you wouldn't have this here. Um, so I think the problem kind of solves itself, if there even is a problem there. They, maybe that that's fine. Uh, it feels a little weird to me, but maybe it's fine. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I don't want to keep talking about this stuff. Oh my God, this video has been an hour. I really didn't, I was like, ah, I can probably knock this out in half an hour. So, I don't know, battle systems are hard. There was a screen to add, some, you know, random number logic, and plenty of things we didn't even get to. We don't have a goblin picture. I could have spent some time drawing a silly monster. Uh, we don't have experience points for fighting, which is unfortunate. It'd be nice to level up. Um, but I think this is enough of a start. And, and maybe this is a... I don't know, like this video series is kind of intended for people who haven't done a lot of programming. And from that perspective, it might be good for me to leave more things and be like, you know, you can do this part, right? This is your homework. Finish up the battle system. Um, I don't know. I could see that being annoying for some people too. So uh, maybe I'll just reserve that for when time seems like an issue like now. Um, so anyway, I'm going to shut up before this video gets any longer. Thank you very much for watching. If you have suggestions, please leave them in the comment. If there are other things you'd like to your, add to your pet game, I have many other videos, including the aforementioned adding skill points, you know, to level up stats on your pets, which would probably be relevant for this if you didn't already watch it. Um, but yes, that is it. Thanks again, and goodbye.